farmers and welcome back to American Falls. It is early morning in the month of October and we are busy cutting the grass. Had to leave some mowers like always so about 4,000 went out the bank but uh, you know what the money has been coming in doing some fertilizing contracts. We're up to 86,000 so it's looking very very good. With this grass though I think I'm going to put this grass into the fermenting silo. Now, we are pretty much full of silage. That can hold a half million liters of that, but I can at least put the grass in there. And why am I doing that and not bringing it over to the bunker? Well, with the money looking as it is, we need about 130,000 to buy the BGA. So instead of making the trip, long trip over to the sheep farm and putting it into the silo bunker there and compacting it and covering it, and then having to use a belt to pick it up, uh, we're just going to put it into the fermenting silo because I'm assuming we're going to be buying the BGA relatively soon. Uh, it's a big harvesting day. Uh, October for us is a lot of corn. We actually even have a corn harvesting contract in field number two. Going to get paid like 15 grand for that. That's pretty much going to fund the header that we got to use for the harvester as I turn off the mowers. I believe I'm done. I didn't leave any big clumps like I did last time, I don't think. Uh, the grass swaths look a little bit bigger than they were last time. Uh, last cut, we got about 240,000 liters of grass off here. I usually get about 260, so I'm wondering by getting 100% lime uh, on it this time that the yield will go up just, uh, just enough, just to give us that little bit extra. All right, we are done cutting the grass. A little quick mowing, se se ugh. mowing session for you guys. All right, let's get rid of those. Uh, while we're in here, we are leasing. Now, um, we are going to get ourselves a big corn header. Now, I'm glad I tested this out. I was testing out to see if my harvester could run this corn header, an 18 meter wide one. I was going to lease this one, which would have cost uh, 9500 because with our corn fields, which we got four of them, plus along with the contract, that's five fields. I wanted to get it done quickly so I wouldn't go over the hour. Uh, the problem with this header is I can't go down the road with it. Um, even with the other header we're going to lease, as we back up out of that one, we're going to lease this one right here. This is a 15 meter wide one, and we lease it for 8,000. Yeah, the other one just cannot get down the road with it. Would not, uh, would not do it. I'm probably going to have to turn traffic off to get as far as we're going to be going, even then, so... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to start with our fields because those are the ones down by the store. And then work our way up to field number two, which is the contract, which we'll finish up with. As for current contracts available on American Falls, there are some good ones. But unfortunately, they're all sugar cane and sugar bean. You can guess which ones. I mean, $50,000, you guarantee it's sugar cane. Uh, there's one for sugar beet. And there is another one for sugar cane. Now, I could always lease the Mark Thor Harvester and the, the according headers for the, uh, the contract and make all like a bandit. But, yeah, we're not going to be doing that. So, just going to focus on the cornfields today. So, we're going back to the farm with our Fent and we're going to get ourselves the trailer. All the corn's going into the silos. All the animals are looking very, very good. Uh, I just, I did feed the birds this morning. I, I did that first thing. I didn't want to get too involved with the harvest and kind of forget the, forget about them. I haven't done so yet. Uh, the pigs are looking well. Kind of interesting thing though on the pigs feed trough. They're going through the feed, but the feed trough is still reading full. I, I think by putting the corn and the corn being count twice, it's kind of screwing around with that a little bit. But yeah, they're doing good and the sheep are doing pretty good. Looks like we had another batch of uh, young ones come in at the sheep farm. So we'll be getting some more wool. And here on American Falls, we're just selling the wool as is. We don't, we're not gonna get the spinnery or anything like that. So I'm gonna bring the fence down to the first cornfield. I'll come back at the combine, head on down to the store. We'll grab the header. Um, the cops are going to seal off the roads and uh, keep traffic away just for a little bit. Uh, the city is fine with us doing that. It's only going to be for about a couple minutes, but that'll be enough for us to get down the road. Then I'll probably have to drive around the fields for the most part like I'm doing kind of like right now until I have to go to field number two. Then when we go to field number two, 
probably going to have to turn traffic off again. I may just leave it off the entire time to make it easier on myself. Uh, but with that being said, I'll see you in just a moment down at the store with the combine. And of course, we got this cornfield right here to harvest. We got uh, that cornfield over there to harvest. We got this one to harvest. And we also got one that's over the top of the hill. And that's the one we're going to start with. Always fun trying to get the combine harvester down these roads. Probably should have turned off the traffic when I left the farm, but I did not. I did just spend $4,500 to repair the combine and about $800 to refuel the combine. So we should be good to go. Kind of wish I had the tracks on the combine. We'll make it just a little bit narrower, but I still think we might be colliding with the traffic. Now, with well, the other header I was going to lease, but like I said, it was too big. I could have gotten a header trailer and brought it to the fields, but uh, I just hate messing around with header trailers. Let's grab this. All right, let's tell the cops to seize traffic just for a little while for us. Uh, let's see, traffic off. There we go. Hopefully we can get all these harvests done within the hour. Uh, not too sure that will happen, but we shall see. I mean, our fields are decent size. And field number two looks big, but it kind of isn't. But it is. Um, if that makes sense. It's bigger than our fields. Let's just, let's just say that. Not combined, but it's bigger than our fields as they were separate. Uh, so much easier going down the road with no traffic. So we got two new fields that were, you know, we bought this uh, this year. Got this cornfield we bought this spring, and we just bought the other cornfield in August. So it'll be the first time that we're harvesting them. Ah, uh, yes. Unleash, unleash the beast. 15 meter wide corn header. 18 meter wide would have been really nice. The next three meters would mean a lot doing all these fields, but... Lower this down. And the yield should be pretty good on both fields. They were fully lined, so pH value and nitrogen value as well are about as best as they're going to get for these fields. Just got to mind the, uh, the American Elm that's in the middle of the field. I assume that's American Elm. So how much corn are we going to get? I have no idea off these fields. Uh, this field here, I think when we bought it, was it like 115% potential yield? Somewhere in there. That field in front of us, I think the expected yield off that entire field is like 92%. So not the greatest. But it's what we could afford. And I'm hoping we get a good amount of corn. Because next year, I don't want to plant as much corn as we have this year. I want to get a stockpile going. That way we can keep up with the 200 pigs that we're going to have in the pig pen. Which, by the way, uh, is getting kind of full on slurry. I think next month the slurry pit will be completely full. I just don't think I'll have the money by then. I need another 60000 So, unless some fertilizing contracts, but more than likely some plowing contracts will come up. But who knows? It, it is also planting season. Although, is there anything to plant in October? Not. I'm not looking for myself. I'm wondering if NPCs are going to be planting anything this month. If I can get on the right category. Well, wheat and barley can be planted. Along with some rye. So maybe if they plant crops like that, we can get some harvesting contracts as we know pay well. But as the fields get harvested, maybe they'll want them cultivated or plowed. I'm going to do as many contracts as I can because the sooner I get the VGA, the sooner I can put our silage in there along with the pig manure and the pig slurry. I got a little bit more time on the manure. You may have seen the manure when I went back to the farm with the fence. Uh, looks like there's going to be two separate piles. The first pile is completely full. 
I don't know how much is actually there. I just see the piles, but uh, luckily for us, we can just grab our trailer and I believe pull up to it and auto refill the trailer with the manure. And we'll bring that over to the BGA to make up electricity, methane, and of course, digestate. And I can't remember if I looked up on this map if I can sell digestate anywhere. If not, I can put down a sell point to sell the digestate. Of course, I could always use the digestate on probably the grass field. Let me turn that off so we're not putting hours on the meter, uh, on the header. And let's go unload the first combine load. So the corn seems to be yielding rather well off the first field. I'm liking that. Yeah, if we do well enough, as I said, next year, maybe we'll have like one corn field. And maybe the rest will be like wheat, barley, sorghum, and oats. And we can put like three of those into the grain mill. We'll keep one to make sure that the pigs have feed and the birds have feed as well. I may not even get all of these fields harvested this episode because it's going to take a while. I don't want the whole episode to be about harvesting. Oh, when I was at the store, I should have bought, because I am out of silage additive, I'm going to need some of that for the grass field as I pick that grass up. I guess I can use the Landini on the forage wagon. We've done it before, and it works out just fine. I just can't use a fence because the fence can be busy doing the, the grain carting. Gotta be careful, there is a fence here somewhere. Don't want to run into that. Now that I'm out here and seeing how much we're getting done in one pass, yeah, it would have been really nice to have the 18 meter wide one, three meters more. And it probably wouldn't have been too expensive to lease the, uh, the header trailer. I mean, those aren't expensive to begin with. I don't buy them that often, so I don't know how much they go for. I'm assuming like four grand, maybe, so I could probably lease it for like 500 bucks. I have no idea. I always get the flex head if I can. The 45 footer, which is kind of a header trailer in its own. Or the honeybee. Which does have a header trailer on it, but yeah, kind of folds up nice and compact. Yeah, also on this field, since I gotta plow it, which we gotta do with all of our corn fields, I'm trying to figure out if I want to plow and uh, get rid of these drain ditches. Well, I wanna call them ditches, because they're not ditches. But uh, these little water runoff areas. I wonder if I should just go ahead and plow in the field that way. Of course, if I do so, I'm gonna need to do soil sampling in those areas. So maybe just wait a couple more seasons. That way when I come back down here with a soil sampler and lime, we get the whole field done together. Yeah, so I'll probably wait another year on that. I think this is the only field I currently have that has those in it. So not gonna be too concerned about it. I do love how the corn on this map, or the coal crop basically on this map, the way the wind blows it around. It's just a little bit more noticeable than the base game. Alright, let's go grab the Fent again.
Yeah, I should get a full trailer off this field. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll get this field done. Then I'll probably hire a worker to do this field over here. And we'll grab the Landini and we'll start picking up that grass. Or maybe I'll do a time lapse. Maybe we can just do a time lapse of me finishing off this field and getting that field done. And then I could get the other field done off camera because that's a small field. It won't take me long to do that one. And then set a worker out. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll figure it out as we go along here. Although I may get a full trailer of corn before I even get done with this field the way it's going. Uh, so we can turn the beacons off because we're not in anyone's way here in the field other than being in our own way. Alright, so almost got the headlands done here and then we'll start zipping around the field. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna fill up that trailer before I get done. The more the merrier. off this field <laughs> we got three more to go plus whatever extra we get off the contract field uh, but this is looking pretty pretty good good thing is our silo does hold a good amount of feed so now it's just a matter of when we get done harvesting the corn this year just have to do some calculations on what we want to be planting for next year and I may do all the planting in the spring we can uh, turn one of these fields around because we got, is it this month and next month to plant the wheat or the barley? Oh, we can plant wheat in November. So if the numbers look good, maybe I'll plant wheat down here or something like that. Because that would be kind of convenient to maybe harvest wheat and just get it right into the grain mill. All right, let's get ourselves a worker to start harvesting this other cornfield. The other new cornfield. The yield in this field is not going to be as well. Uh, 
All right, here we are, create job. I'm not in the field, so I gotta select a field. I think one headland should do it. It's gonna be, it's kind of a weird shaped field. Uh, no, just one headland. Overlap, no. Because it might be running kind of close to a fence line, so I don't want to get stuck. It may get stuck anyways. Generate course. That's more passes than I thought it would need. And while we get a substance worker to do this, I can run back to the farm, dump off the corn that we have. All right, who we got working for us this morning? Yeah, it looks like looks like Frank is in there. Let's run over and get our 1,000. I do love this uh, corn that Lancey Boy has on his maps. Uh, I can't remember who actually did the corn texture. And those are not weeds, by the way. Uh, that's this undergrowth of the corn that you get. Right, we're going to spin around here. I'm getting a little bit of a lag around here once in a while. Not sure what it's from. I mean, I guess 50 frames is not too bad in some areas. It's kind of weird how uh, maps work on giants. And there is a big bump there somewhere I keep going over. Sometimes you just get a spot on, the ma on any map, even in the base game maps, where the frames just kind of uh, do not do so well. It could be that because we're harvesting this corn texture, that might be it. But either way, uh, the first trailer we brought back was 98% full. This one is 80% full. So, 42, 70. Yeah, we have harvested like 76,000 liters of corn off that field. That's pretty darn good. So, I'm thinking next year, I'm not going to need at most one cornfield maybe not even that but we'll we'll wait and see when next spring comes what, what we decide so yeah i'm gonna have to turn one of these fields around and put some wheat into it maybe actually the field up by the farm because maybe we'll uh, i think it's wheat that we're keeping in the silo for the chickens ducks and the pigs so maybe we'll plant wheat up here Get that turned around and planted in November. And then the other fields we can figure out in the springtime. Probably sorghum and oats in a couple and corn in one of them. Because we don't have a full pig pen yet and they're not all adults yet either. So it's hard to tell what the uh, consumption of food is going to be in that pen. So if we go to our, uh, it's hard to tell how many pigs we got. I don't think that that's going to tell us when I go in here how many pigs we have. Uh, sheep, pigs. Yeah, it doesn't tell you the number. Uh, yearly food, 159,000. And I forgot what our pig count was at. Uh, we're half full. But then again, they're not all, you know, they're not all size. They're not, they're not all grown adults yet. So if someone did an estimate, they were thinking of probably 300,000. So if that's the case, you know, I think we're going to be doing fine on the corn. Because that's a combination of corn and wheat that they would need. But if we ever decide that we don't have enough feed for the pigs, we can always just keep on selling them. That's what we're raising them for, just to raise them and sell them. Hopefully the uh, the grown adults is one we'll be selling. Uh, let me just cut across here. Don't have to worry about traffic because, yeah, the cops have uh, barricaded the roads off for the entire morning, I guess. And already the combine needs to be unloaded, which is a good sign. Let's try to stay out of our neighbor's fields if I can. Um, so you didn't even make it that far around. Where where art thou? Oh, you're over there. 
All right, I'll just keep going around. I probably should have cut across the first part of the field. That's fine. So they made it about halfway across the first headland, or the only headland that they're doing. I'm not going to merge these two fields together. I like having these separate fields. I'll have to clean this up afterwards. Missed a few spots here and there. get this unloaded uh yeah probably a good thing i didn't get the bigger corn header i thought about this when i was uh, in the time lapse because then i wouldn't be able to pull up and unload <laughs> the one thing i wasn't really thinking about yeah, that corn field there is not going to take us too long to harvest So yeah, I'm going to get all my corn fields done first before I move on to the contract. Which, by the way, I should be checking because time's passing and things could be coming up. I'm really just looking for, well, sewing contracts you can see are going on. Uh, that's something I could actually do, but for a thousand bucks, not worth it. And all the other harvesting contracts, not too interested in. I'm going to get my tractor off the field. Although I assume I'll be back to unload them pretty soon. All right, let's jump back to the farm, grab the Landini. I think it's back here. That's the Voltra. Uh, where it, oh, there's the Landini. Oh, that's right, I fed, the, I fed the birds this morning. That's what I last did with you. We'll have to make a trip down to the store at some point to grab some silage additive. I'll probably just grab the, you know, drop, drop off the forage wagon in the field. I'll just grab the Landini and go on down and I'll put the silage additive on the roof and bring it back to the grass field. I can get some passes done because we got, what, 40%? Yeah, 40%. So even though our fermenting silo is going to be full of silage, I can put grass into it. It just won't uh, be activated and processing the grass at all. And I took the wrong passageway, but we can still get to our grass field from here. Yeah, getting the BGA is going to help us out quite a bit, I think. We'll earn more money that way with the silage. And then, of course, we got loads of manure and slurry to bring. Well, I say loads. The slurry, I think, is like at 40,000 liters. And the manure, I have no idea. Part of me wants to start picking it up. But then again, I won't have no place to put it. So uh, it's got to stay there until we do pick it up. So I'm kind of hoping we get like 260,000 liters off this field again. Am I going to be able to keep track of it? Probably not the way it's going. Uh, let's see, I need to go down to here. To here, yeah, this is still running. Alright, so it's got about 140,000 liters into it. So, pretty good math. 260 get us up to 400,000, correct? 400,000 liters of grass in there. But then again, currently it's running and turning some of that grass into silage. But we should be in the ballpark of about 400,000 liters of grass once I get done. Yes, it would be nice to have an upgraded forage wagon, but this is doing the job. <laughs> I would just like to cut down the amount of trips I got to make back and forth here. I mean, I, I probably, going back on it, instead of buying the fermenting silo that we did, I probably should have just bought the one that was at the cow farm, but I kind of like to have my, my equipment or buildings that I own on my own land, so it just felt more right for myself to buy the one that was on the pig farm, 
because we own that. I mean, eventually we'll own the cow farm down the road. And maybe I'll buy that fermenting silo for 60000 That way it'll just be closer. Got to keep my eye on the upper right-hand corner. Frank will tell me when his combine is full. It's just one of these things. Every time I do this grass and bring it here from the grass field, I think about getting the bigger forge wagon because of the trips I do make. And it's like the first two trips is like, you know, really it's not that bad. But by the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th trip, it's like, oh, yeah, just wish I could... <laughs> gotten this done a little bit faster. But that's when you gotta kinda gotta hold yourself back and realize you're playing the game to have fun. It's part of the job. Just get you know have fun and enjoy doing the job. But we always have those jobs we just don't like doing. It's like harvesting corn. I was enjoying harvesting the corn but would I want to harvest all these cornfields by myself? No, I'd rather hire a worker right now to get some of that done. And I can go off and do some other things. Now, the good news is, in some sense, I don't believe I'm going to have to lease or pretty much buy anything expensive throughout the winter. So it's just a matter of getting another $60,000 in the bank account to buy the BGA. Uh, we'll leave that running. Frank is uh, texting me on the phone, let me know that he's full. And of course, he's over there. And as we do know now, three combine loads pretty much will fill up this trailer. Although doing one of those root crop harvesting contracts wouldn't be too bad because I would get a little bit of the crop as we normally do for the most part. I guess for some people are still having some problems with contracts on some maps or some fields every now and then to where you don't get enough yield off the contract field to complete the contract. Uh, but we could get, you know, maybe some extra sugar beet and that way we could feed the pigs. But it only counts 5% towards the pigs. And actually, I think it says 100% on them. Does it not? Health, 100%. So, do you really need the root crop? I, I don't see why. And they're not producing anything, so it doesn't hurt their productivity. I don't know if I'll get into root crops on this map now or not, since we're doing a whole bunch of it on the hills of Tuscany. So we may just keep on doing what we're doing here on American Falls. Of course, currently we can't do uh, the veggies on American Falls, but I'm thinking uh, now that Stone Valley has passed console testing, at least the last post I saw from Lancy Boy about American Falls is once Stone Valley passes on the console, he will uh, send Giants an updated version of American Falls. So, and I had not been on his Facebook page in about two or three days. Basically, the last time I was on it when Stone Valley was getting released. So I don't know if he sent it in or not. Although I guess, from when I was reading some posts on his Facebook page, I think some people on PlayStation 5 are having some problems with the Stone Valley map. Nothing major, I think. So if you happen to play Stone Valley on PS5, um, you may want to go to his Facebook page to see what other PS5 players are saying about Stone Valley. 
about not... I think someone said, though, they couldn't get it to load, so I guess that would be a big problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> not being able to load it up. Could be a mod conflict somewhere there. That's one of the biggest things about Farming Simulator. When Giants test something, so like when they test, like, Stone Valley, they just load up Stone Valley. They don't throw in mods in there, so... I don't know how many players out there... Leave a comment below if you're a player that plays with basically no mods. Absolutely none. I think most people are going to play with at least a few. So, yeah, when Giants test it, they don't test it with a mod here and there. They just test the base mod that was sent for them, and it gets passed. They don't deal with mod conflicts because... I've run into a bunch of mod conflicts, and I'm pretty sure other people have as well. Luckily, I really haven't run into any that caused too much of an issue. I think we had a, I had a problem on Hinterland with a mod conflict. I kind of forgot what it was. All right, another batch going in. So basically, the way the combine's filling up, by the time I start getting back to the field to pick up more grass, the combine should be getting kind of full. And I guess this is where on the farm, having another big tractor, I could benefit from. Only because right now, of course, I'm using the fence for grain transport. Uh, another... I don't need one as big as a Fen. We didn't need the Fen 1000 to begin with. I was going to buy the a 900. I was going to buy the 938, I think I was aiming for. But just as I was getting ready to buy it, the 1038 came up for sale. Yeah, I would need a, like another 300 horsepower tractor. So, I mean, I could be doing... I could put that tractor, the 300 horsepower tractor, on the forge wagon, pick up grass. And the Landini could get to business in plowing up the cornfields that we're harvesting. The Voltra may actually be able to pull that plow. Uh, <laughs> what's that, a 125? But that plow is kind of deceiving. What does that plow say it needs for horsepower? That says it needs 320. The Landini is a 225. And we use that all the time and it does it no problem, so... And I'm not doing it the other way. If you don't know the trick with that plow, if you turn it around, um, it'll still plow, and you can plow at a maximum speed of, I think it's the tractor. It goes by the speed of the tractor. So there's another, there's a uh, implement that says, yeah, we need 320 horsepower. But then when you use it, you really don't need maybe I don't want to say half of that. We're not quite half of that, but, you know, getting down there. Now, this is why I don't show much of me picking up the grass in the forage wagon, because this is basically what I do for about 45 minutes or so. Never really time myself. Uh, where is... Oh, I can see the combine is getting near full, so... Let's fill up this uh, forge wagon here. Yep, now they're full. And now I am full. We're going to turn that off right now. And we're going to go over here. Because basically once I empty out the combine again, I'm going to have to go back to the farm and unload this, which is great. Probably going to go over the hour leasing fee on the corn header, but probably not close enough. Uh, yeah, not much we can do about that. Yeah, definitely glad uh, in a way that the other corn header when I was testing it would not go down the road because I would have leased it and then went down low and went, oh, um, that's an issue. Uh, 
I'm thinking Frank can finish off the rest of his field. Uh, maybe not before he gets a full combine. Oh yeah, we gotta get those uh, straw bales picked up in the winter time. I'm thinking to benefit us here on the farm, I may get myself an auto loader where we can do pallets and also bales. So we can use it a two for one. So we'll auto load the bales and then we, when we do the uh, grain mill and make flour, we can use the same trailer to pick up the flour pallets and move those. And plus when I unload the bales, when we do keep bales around, when I unload them, they won't stack like the other bale trailer does. Where it stacks them, what, seven high? I mean, we can use the front end loader on the Voltra to get the top three off. Uh, but yeah, maybe just getting an auto loader trailer that I can do pallets on and bales will be good for us. Because we can get one rather cheap. The other bale trailer that we've been using, that costs like 70 grand. And I could probably get an El Cheapo, just a flatbed trailer that will auto load the pallets and the bales. As for doing straw pellets, I'm, I'm battling with myself to figure out if I want to do it on this map or on the hills of Tuscany or at all. I'm just not hearing a lot of people saying, boy, you can make a lot of money doing that. It almost sounds like if you sell the straw as is and or make straw pellets, it's you are going to make a little bit more money on the pellets from my understanding. Just not, you're not breaking the bank. Uh, I guess is the way we need to... Th that's what I'm hearing. I haven't tested out anything myself, but three people on Discord have told me straw pellets, for the amount you spend to get the equipment, uh, just the Primos itself to make if you want to, it just isn't worth it. Especially if you're playing on hard economy, I got told, which I always play in hard economy, so... Yeah, I don't know. If, if I do straw pellets or hay pellets or even wood pellets, I think is uh, something else people are doing. Um, I'll just do it for fun and not really trying to make a whole bunch of money. Uh, the problem is here in American Falls, we're in year six and we're, we're making money and I keep spending it on land, which is great. But I'm thinking once we get the BGA which is going to be pretty darn soon and move forward here. I think the money is going to start coming in. Of course, the pigs, once we get a full pig pen, of course, once we get 200 pigs, we'll just make more slurry, more manure, more the BGA will be working, and the more pigs we can sell as well. So I think we are getting ready to be at that point on this farm here to where we'll start making some money. I do have a $300,000 loan I do need to pay off as well. And I was hoping to pay off some of it this year um, it's going to be kind of difficult to do so. Actually, I should be unloading you as you go. But this is getting the second field of five done. Uh, I am going to get the other smaller field. And also start working on the field up by the pig farm. I'm going to get, you know, most of the, I'm going to get the first one done for sure. And maybe all the second one, and then maybe starting next episode, I'll be in field number two for the contract job. And we'll get most of that done. We'll get paid like 15 grand. Because I didn't borrow any equipment on the contract. So that'll get us up to like 88,000, which is nice. And of course, if any other contracts come in in the meantime, I don't have that much to sell during the winter months, if anything at all. We don't have any flour. Uh, let, let me just double check on this currently. Yeah, so we got a good amount of wheat. Currently, we're up to almost 180,000 liters of corn. So that's very good. Uh, silage, we will sell, but that's after the BGA. The hay we're keeping. Uh, the straw is kind of hard to tell because we got that sitting in the field and we're going to keep some. But it's not that worth that much anyways. I mean, maybe the amount of straw we're going to sell, we'll get like 15,000 sitting in the field. And I don't have much of anything else. 
Uh, oh, yeah. So manure. Oh, yeah. We can see the stat in here. We do have 33,000 liters of manure. And, of course, we got almost 45,000 liters of slurry. That is all in the pig uh, pen itself. But other than that, we don't have anything else to sell other than the silage, manure, and slurry. But that's all got to go to the BGA. So I got I to gotta get up to 130,000 to do so. And I'll come back in here and check on the contracts. Yeah, almost 16 grand there. Um, but as the day goes on and November comes, hopefully a few contracts will come in and we'll get the money because when January, February, March roll around, uh, sorry, uh, January, December, geez, December, January, February, <laughs> those are the months I need. Uh, yeah, uh, there's hardly going to be any contracts, if any at all. I'm, I'm assuming none at all. So we're not going to make any money throughout the winter. If I don't have the BGA by then. But anyways, we're just about done working in this field. I want to move on to the others. Uh, probably have to pay like $500 or so or $1,000. Whatever the extra hourly fee is on that header. Which is going to be, let's scroll down and find it here. And if I go lease uh, hourly. Oh, okay. It's $3,200 per hour. Well, it is what it is. Uh, we got to harvest the corn. But uh, anyways, that's what we're going to wrap it up for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you again right here in American Falls. But until then, have a good one.